Curtis Calhoun here with MMA News, and right now I am joined by UFC lightweight Joe Selecki, who's set to make his return to the Octagon next Saturday, June 4th, against Alex Da Silva, UFC Vegas 56. Joe, how's it going, man? Hey, man. We're going really good. Just finishing up uh, a workout here at GMO in uh, Belmont, North Carolina, and closing down camp pretty soon here. A couple more days, and uh, all's been good, so can't complain. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. And uh, first things first, uh, kind of just talk about the energy in the gym ahead of this one and uh, just kind of how pumped are you to get back in the octagon? Yeah, I'm really excited. You know, the, uh, I trained at a couple of different locations. You know, um, all of us are all like one giant team, I feel like, because we all travel and train, you know, to each other. But, uh, you know, obviously our head coach, Jeff GMO at GMO, that's where I'm at now training. And then uh, the rest of the camp has actually been done at home uh, at Salsa Dog Jiu Jitsu. Uh, I've traveled a lot in the past, like to so where I was like, driving pretty long distances, like over an hour, one way, you know, three days a week, last camp, the camp before that. Um, so kind of cut that down a little bit to where I was going, even in the off time, you know, before fight camp to fitness edge MMA only, only once a week hmm. and doing everything on one day and kind of stacking my schedule there instead of having to go back and forth and back and forth. So uh, the energy in the gym has been great, but also the energy outside of the gym, like saving that travel for like the one long day a week to come here to Charlotte and uh, you know, get that good training in. But really not being spread too thin or rushing around and having that time to like recover between sessions. Uh, it's been great. It's honestly, it's my job. And, you know, even if I wasn't feeling good, I should probably lie to you and tell you I was feeling great, but uh, genuinely the best I've ever felt. And uh, you know, the best I've ever performed in training. So, you know, the whole goal is to show up fight night, but if I do that, I really think I'll put on uh, you know, the performance of my career. And with that uh, new training arrangement, do you feel like it's uh, a lot less uh, stressful and all that? Oh yeah, of course. You know, fighting is so stressful as it is, you know, as the fight gets closer, you got to, you know, do a bunch of different things and, uh, you know, be prepped obviously in your fight preparation, first and foremost, and the diet, everything else. Um, plus, you know, this is our, our career, but we have real lives, you know, got families and stuff like that. So the most we can cut out, like, you know, some extra stress is not needed, it, the better it is, you know? So it's been fantastic. Uh, I mean, literally the last, you know, seven, eight months since the last fight has been just, uh, been awesome really really great experience and uh you know i'm having a lot of fun again which uh you know sometimes when you first get to the ufc it's exciting sometimes you get in that lull i was mm. feeling a lot of pressure coming off of three wins and really putting this you know listening to a lot of the noise and putting this external pressure on myself that was just not needed and uh i feel like that in addition with you know the adjustments in training have just been huge and uh, really really rewarding this time around the camp has been awesome and everything's been real intentional. I'm just enjoying myself and having a great time. And I'm, I'm looking forward to going to fight week and, you know, looking forward to every part of it, even the weight cut. And uh, it's going to be a great time. So I'm ready to go. I love it. And uh, Alex De Silva, obviously uh, coming off of a nearly a two year layoff. Um, are you going in with almost no expectations in this one in terms of what he'll bring just because of the layoff of his, or what are you expecting uh, with this fight? Yeah, I'm expecting him at his best. You know, a fighter can change a lot in two years. Um, he's a little younger than me, I think, but at this age, like we're pre, we're right in the beginning of our prime or he may be pre prime. Um, and, and you're growing leaps and bounds between fights. You know, I know the changes I'm making and have made in the past and, uh, I expect him to do the same, but yeah, I'm not expecting anything other than the best version of him. You know, I can't anticipate whether he's going to come out with a kick or a knee or whatever, you know, some guys come out, you know, reckless, some guys come out conservative. We don't know. So, um, especially cause, and I always say this. Um, and I've always said this even as an amateur and stuff, and I've had to got back to that kind of is they haven't fought me. And it doesn't mean that I'm, you know, better than him or anything else other than the fact that, you know, he's never fought somebody built exactly like me who has my exact skill set, or, you know, I'm a grappler. Sometimes guys that usually come out reckless back off a lot. We don't know. So um, that's the thing is it's been a lot more freeing to, I've watched him. I'm aware of what he does. I know where he's very good, which is kind of everywhere, but uh you know, really focusing on me and having so many different looks this camp who all do certain things that he's done, at least in the past, but uh, really worrying about how I'm going to go out there and stay in the present moment and make my reads. And if I do that, I, I really, really, really think uh, I'm a tough out for anybody. And, uh, like I said, the whole goal is to show it on the fourth, but we prepared to completely do that and uh, to put on a heck of a performance. I love it. And uh, let's talk a little bit about the time off in between fights. Cause uh, you got uh, quite a lot of time off uh, since your Jared Gordon fight. Um, do you feel like that was kind of almost a blessing in disguise in terms of just focusing on yourself and your training and uh, just kind of the improvements you need to make? Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, you know, obviously I would have liked to fight sooner just cause you know, I'm, I'm a competitor. I like to stay active. And like I said, this is also our career. So you want to work, but uh, I do think the long layoff has been good, you know, um, 
it got me back to a lot of things that I needed to really look at. You know, sometimes I always learn from my wins. I really do. Um, and I really can't think of a time where I haven't and just been like, oh, everything's great. We just keep going. It has not been that in my career at all. So, you know, I do learn from my wins. I try to learn from other people's mistakes when I watch fights too. But, you know, there's just that time when you lose where uh, things that you didn't maybe see get brought to your attention, you know. And uh, for me, it was in every area of everything. You know, I, I spent a lot of time, you know, I'm a Christian. My faith is super important to me. And, like, spending time daily on, on my faith and not just mm. walking around saying, I'm a Christian and I'm going to pray you know, every day, like I was, I've, I've like learned, I've grown, um, in, in getting, you know, better and deeper in my walk with Christ, like my life has felt better, you know, forget fighting. That's a byproduct. And that happens as, as things are getting better, just, uh, you know, my faith and, and having the confidence to go, you know, I know that God's hands at work and I'm going to be able to sing his praises, win, lose, draw, you know, healthy, injured, whatever it may be. And that has been a huge, huge thing for me to, to really, you know, to really come to that realization in my life. Um, but outside of that, you know, more time to work on my skill set from fighting, more time to, you know, have some fun. I got back to competing a lot, get back to my roots, which is, uh, you know, I was a Brazilian jiu-jitsu competitor for years and years and years. And uh, I had not done a lot of that since I got in the UFC. And, you know, a couple opportunities came up, took, uh, you know, took the chance to go to the ADCC trials on the East Coast. That was a good time. Just that, again, there's no expectation. There's no pressure. There's no, you know, big, you know, you're going to pay your bills or you're not, if you win or lose that type of thing, it was just to go, I, I want to try to prove that I'm one of the best and have a good time. Uh, did a fight pass invitational, which was like a team thing with all the guys from CFFC. That was a blast. Grappled Cerrone at Fury Grappling. And then I did a local one down here, like a quintet style, but it was three, mm. uh, three of us on a team uh, down here in Myrtle beach. And that was a blast too. And I actually ended up going against uh, some really tough competition who we didn't know was going to be there. So uh, just having fun with it, man. And, and really, really enjoying you know, the pure essence of competition. And, and I don't think if I wouldn't have had that long layoff, I would have done any of that. So uh, it's really, I, I just feel, I feel great. I feel great going into this fight. I've enjoyed the time and uh, I've stayed working nonstop. And that's the big thing is I thought I was going to fight a lot sooner just because, you know, in the past I fought sooner sometimes and stayed busy and I was telling my manager I was ready, but you know, the way things worked out exactly how they're meant to be. And now I'm fighting here in June. So uh, I wouldn't have changed anything that happened in the last, you know, six, seven eight months, whatever it's been uh, for anything. Cause it's been a, a great experience. Absolutely. And uh, who's going to be in your corner for this one? Uh, so uh, my head coach, Jeff Jimmo and my coach, John Salter, who's uh, you know, the owner of South Belgium Jiu-Jitsu have always been in my corner. And then uh, my training partner, Zach DeLeon, who's sitting right here, uh, main sparring partner, huge part of my camp. Uh, he'll be there this time too. And he's been a big, uh, you know, a big, big important part of my camp. Give me that look of the Silva. You know, we were talking with, uh, my kickboxing coach the other day and he was like man like i don't know that a lot of guys are going to give you a better look than zach will which mm -hmm. is funny because uh he has you know a couple boxing matches but then one one fight in mma and, and he's going to be an attorney here once he passes the bar this summer and uh i laugh I'm like you'll never hear him maybe but uh he's beating up a lot of us pros that are at the higher level pretty regularly so uh yeah they'll be in the corner and then a lot of great training partners for this camp uh cody jones at a fitness edge mma who's an awesome pro who's like one win away from you know, contender series, short notice UFC fight, anything like that. Um, been training with me for, you know, since I moved to the South 10 years ago, we were doing jiu-jitsu together. Then when I took up fighting, he was already a fighter. Been getting beat up by him and sparring for seven years. Um, Nick Rodriguez at a gym -o, uh, Billy Jack Cup, Brian Barbarina, just so many guys that have been a huge help in that area. Um, Wyatt Hopkins in my jiu-jitsu has been a training partner of mine. Uh, and everybody at Salt the Dog and Jimmo and Fitness Edge, but uh, those are the ones that have been, you know, close to my weight that have really, really been pushing me, and uh, it's been great. I love it. And uh, you kind of touched on it a little bit there, but uh, you've gotten a lot of work in with uh, Bellator middleweight uh, John Salter ahead of this one. Um, just kind of talk about how valuable it is for you to get uh, that kind of look from a guy that has that experience and has been there and done that in the sport. Oh, it's awesome, you know. And and one is uh, from a physical standpoint. John's an animal, you know, and he's a couple weight classes bigger than me. So uh, when I have to grapple him or wrestle him, like I truly can say like, you know, if you have another guy, your weight or who's very good, but you're competitive, like you go, Oh, well, I like, I don't want to think that the guy on fight night can be stronger than this or better than this. Like I know for a fact on the, my worst night, there's no way it can be as bad as having John just mauling me, you know? So um, from a physical standpoint, taking confidence out of, I've seen the worst there can be definitely that, but if I'm having him as a friend and mentor, you know, that's why we moved here. Like uh, the big thing I always said was like, till I came to train with John, I never saw what success in MMA looked like. I had seen guys that pursued it. And then, you know, 
maybe they failed short of their goal or they got like one fight in like a, you know, a Bellator undercard or a shot at the UFC and failed. And that, that's bad, but you go, okay, I've only ever seen where like, that's what MMA career is. You get a shot, it doesn't go your way. And then you teach right. private lessons for the rest of your life, which is fine. But it was just like, I never got that confidence of seeing that person who was doing it, you know, and how they carry themselves and how he was disciplined and trained and, you know, managed to, to you know, do things that people don't think you can do, like run a gym while you're fighting for a world title at a high level, or, you know, all those things. So, uh, that's been huge. And, and it, can, it carries on every single fight. And, um, John does not like blow smoke. So when he says you're ready or you're going to beat this guy, or, you know, I think you're ready, you can beat this guy, whatever. Uh, he means it, you know, that's how all my coaches are. We've got a really good group of, um, you know, honest coaches who don't want anything from me other than to help me, you know, he's already got his own career, own gym and everything else going where it's like, he doesn't need to rely on me and throw me into a situation I'm not ready for, or try to make a quick buck off me or anything like that. He's never taken anything from me, you know, which, uh, it, it just speaks to the caliber of person that he is and friend and coach and teammate, and you know, mentor. So huge, huge, uh, influence in this camp, but also just my career in life. I gotcha. And uh, a lot has been talked about lately uh, around the sport about MMA judging and uh, the topic of open scoring in MMA and whether or not it's good or bad. You hear um, opinions from both sides of the issue. What's kind of your stance in terms of MMA judging? What do you feel like, if any, changes need to be made to the scoring system, judging and all that? Yeah, I don't know. I was I was watching something yesterday about this. Like, I really don't know where I stand because it's like, it could change the, it's going to change the, the dynamic of fights if you do mm. open scoring, but it's not going to change the quality of judging. So yeah, you know, you're down, but ultimately if it's that close and you don't know, you're probably going to fight like you're losing anyway. You know, that's, that's how I would treat it. And, um, you know, I think the better coaches and corners would also say, Hey, we think you got it, but we don't know, you know? So, but if you start displaying bad judging, all you're going to see is probably fighters unwind or get mad or lash out during a fight. Um, it's such a weird thing. But like I said, we're the one, uh, I was telling a friend the other day, like we're the only sport where you can't go to the scoreboard for a reliable outcome. But the only thing about that is like, it's subjective, right? So like, mm. um, I was watching Ariel Hawani talking with Aya Quinta, I think it was, and he was like, well, in wrestling, you know, like maybe Gable Stevenson, if there wasn't open scoring, wouldn't have went for that takedown with one second left or whatever, but it's not scored as a whole five minutes or a whole three, two minutes, like in wrestling, it's scored by each, like a takedown two points and this and that. So, unless we're going to reward, you know, half points or points for punches landed or a knees worth so much, or I don't know that open scoring even makes sense. I think it's just better judging. And I know that's a really loose term too. Cause then you go, what steps do you take? I mean, you have to have them have a, you know, to get the certification, they got to train so many hours or watch so many fights. Or I don't know what the answer is, but uh, yeah, I, there's definitely an issue, but I don't know that open scoring solves it. You know, I don't know that it doesn't either, but I think more than anything, you're just going to get more crowd reactions that are going to be booing. Fighters are going to be pissed off mid fight. But uh, the other thing is the viewership. You know, it's uh, if a guy's down, you know, four rounds to zero, they may not watch the fifth round. You know, oh, it's a blowout. He has no chance to win it. Or, or, you know, a lot of guys cut big promos after they announce the winner. Well, if I already know who won, because before the commercial break, we already know it's 50 45, I'll turn the TV yeah. off, you know, and then you don't get that, you know, Michael Chandler cutting the promo from McGregor or whatever that they get so excited about, you know. I would watch because I like the sport, but, you know, your more casual fans might be like, all right, it's over, we'll turn it off. So I definitely see the downside to that. That big moment of going, take a big deep breath, waiting for the winner um, is a big part of the sport that kind of adds to the dramatic, you know, the dramatic draw of it. So uh, I really don't have a good answer, but I see both sides and, uh, Ultimately, I think we need more qualified judges, not a guy that's sitting there that, you know, doesn't look like he can run a mile or, or throw a couple punches. You know, you don't know, you don't, then you don't know what the fighter's trying to do or, you know, how things should be. You don't know the, the dynamic of what's going on in the cage. You know, the refs are pretty trained and they know what we're trying to do. So I think the judges should be the same. I gotcha. And uh, last question for me, uh, what can fans expect from you at uh, UFC Vegas 56? Yeah, I think uh, the best version of me that I've ever been, you know, I, I know that you can definitely expect that my job is to show it, you know, this fight game is crazy and, you know, I can slip in a banana peel on the way out there and blow my knee out and be crawling after him. But point being, I know that you can know for a fact that me stepping in there on June 4th is better than me on October 2nd of last year. So uh, yeah, it's just a hard fought performance. God willing, we come out and we put on a great show and, you know, get my hand raised at the end and go home with my family. That's, that's the whole goal every single time. And uh I put in all the work to do so. So that's what can be expected. I love it. And before we go, I'll give you the floor to uh, shout out any sponsors you have, shout out your team, all that good stuff. I'll uh, give you the final word. 
Yeah, I appreciate it, man. Um, just, you know, all the teammates we talked about, everybody talked dog, Jimmo, Fitness Edge MMA, uh, who has their grand opening coming up soon. They did a big renovation down there, so uh, which is awesome. So shout out to them. They're going to bring some uh, big seminars this summer to Myrtle Beach, too, which I think I know all four of them, but I can't say that because I'll probably get in trouble. But they're very big names, so that'll be cool. Uh, everybody can keep an eye out for that if you're in the area or you want to go in the summer and just travel to train. Um, and same thing as Salt Dog, we're by the beach. So if you ever want to train, come on in, hit up, uh, you know, either myself or John Salter on Instagram or Salt Dog Instagram. We love having visitors and tough roles. So if you want to come in and get some jujitsu, come in. Uh, but yeah, everybody, we talked about all the coaches. Um, my boxing coach, Chris Gowd, as always. And uh, I talked about it in some other interviews is uh, we added a new kickboxing coach to this camp, uh, Alan Branch, just by chance because he has moved to the Wilmington area from where he used to be. And uh, we've been missing that big time is uh, – having you know a real kickboxing and boxing expert in the area like that who's uh not just great at the sport but like a good coach good teacher you know um uh, been a big big game changer for me it's only been you know two two and a half months where we've been able to work together so uh, i'm excited to show that in the fight and then you know just in my career going forward i think he's been a, a really big addition so we're gonna shout him out and say thank you um yeah and of course as always uh my wife my wife and my daughter it's everything man it's uh it's awesome so it's just been great having their support, um, especially my wife, because she can actually support. My daughter will just be yelling at the TV. She doesn't know. She's, she's not even two yet. So she'll just be right. excited to see my face on TV, uh, which is support in its own right, because it makes me feel great. But my wife has been, you know, so supportive day in and day out. Um, and I wouldn't be here without her. That's, that's just how it is, you know. Um, from the beginning to now, it's been crazy. I was telling the other day how, like, on our second date, when I had never fought and just wanted to start fighting, somehow in my crazy brain i was like look like i'm gonna be busy like i really want to pursue this and i plan to be in the ufc one day so and like she was like yeah sounds good and i'm like okay i don't know who's crazy you're like me for coming up with that or you for like standing by it from the beginning and being like yeah this is joe he's gonna be in the ufc one day like we were right. both nuts you know um so yeah she's the best and uh, i love her so much and uh yeah i have some great sponsors that have helped me out uh dtm dobson surf management in, up in new jersey um lifelong friend of mine black belt from Passage Jiu Jitsu, uh, where I trained my whole life. So, a uh, long time been supporting me. Uh, SNS Recovery, same thing. Great family friend who's supported me through my entire career, has driven up and down the coast to be at my fights, which is so cool. Um, yeah, I want to find uh, Dad Tired, the podcast for dads and husbands, which has been awesome because uh, they sponsored me for the fight. But also before that, like I've been, a, I was a guest on there once and then became a listener. So, they, they help me all the time just because uh, it's a great outlet for dads and husbands just trying to lead your families well. Um, so kind of a plug, but kind of not, because I actually like love the podcast. Um, yeah, so just want to thank them. Devil's Dowry uh, out of Wilmington has awesome barbecue sauces that I actually uh, went through a whole bottle of in like a week and a half. So I had to ask for more to bring to Vegas because my diet has gotten bland. So uh, I want to shout them out too. Um, has been a big help. And a bunch of others, but uh, as always. And then, uh, yeah, just some personal thanks. I want to thank uh, John Hassett, my lifelong coach who has just, uh, I wouldn't be here doing this if I never met him, you know? Mm. Uh, I don't know if I, I don't know what kind of man I am, but I know I'd be half the one I am if I didn't meet him as well um, outside of the match. So uh, I want to thank him just because I appreciate so much what he's done for me. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. I want to thank everybody that supports me, man, all the messages. Uh, you know, anybody buys a shirt, whatever it is, it, it doesn't go unnoticed. I appreciate you having me on. Like, uh, you just feel all that support, and I really, really appreciate it, and I carry it with me into the fight. So, yeah, just want to thank everybody. Absolutely. Well, Joe, thanks again for the time. I uh, can't wait for the fight. I'm sure we'll uh, chat again soon. Thank you so much. Yeah. Nice to meet you, man. Thanks for having me on.